Hello and welcome to the second episode of Danetkas, Crime and No Punishment. I will start by reading out the riddle to you. The riddle says the following. The perfect crime was committed. Only the genius could have done it. It was such an incredible feat that when the victim heard what happened, he rewarded the thief. We have an image that accompanies this riddle. I will describe the image for you. The image seems like a choir singing with some hands that some people might recognize it um, from an artwork of Leonardo da Vinci. Maybe you recognize this image? Where could you find a choir singing? Here are the questions that you need to solve. What was the crime? Who was the genius? And why did the victim reward the thief? Very unusual that the victim rewards the thief. What hints do we have here? So a choir usually can be found in churches singing. So maybe this story relates a bit to the church. What hints can Mr. Rigoletto give us? The first hint that Mr. Rigoletto will provide us says, This sinner violated the sacred law. Hmm. So the sinner might be the thief, right? So he made a crime and he violated the sacred law. So maybe there was a religious law of some sort. We have to find out what it was. The second Rigoletto says, copyright infringement in those times. Hmm, copyright infringement. So that means that he stole, copied something down. Maybe he didn't pay the authors for their auto rights. So he copied music, perhaps. Um, he stole music from someone. But like I said, the victim rewarded the thief. So that still seems unexplained. We thought he was a sinner, but he helped propagate the fate. That was the third Rigoletto. We thought he was a sinner, but he helped propagate the fate. So actually, by committing this crime, this apparently sinner propagated the fate. So he copied something, maybe. And uh, by doing this, he helped propagate the fate. Do you have any idea of what might have happened? I will read now the answer for you. A sacred chant performed only during the Holy Week in the Sistine Chapel was forbidden from being written down for more than a century. The absence of scores guaranteed endless curiosity and mysticism, which made the music very popular. A child with extraordinarily talents managed to write down the music by hearing it only once. Later, the Pope found out what he did, but he got so impressed by the talent of the young musician that he lifted the ban and published the scores. This helped propagate the sacred music. Austrian composer Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart received the medal and got the title of Knight of the Vatican. Here's some additional information about this story. So this story is actually about the Miserere of composer Gregorio Allegri. The Miserere was composed during the reign of Pope Urban VIII, probably during the 1630s, for the exclusive use of the Sistine Chapel during the Tenebrae services of Holy Week. So the image was actually an image from the Sistine Chapel, which is present in Rome, Italy. The original ornamentations that made the work famous were Renaissance techniques that preceded the composition itself and they were closely guarded by the Vatican. Few written sources showed the ornamentation and it was this that created the legend of the work's mystery. So, actually, the music that was written down was very often ornamented. And in the 16th chapel, these singers were very famous and their ornamentations were legendary. They were not written down, these ornamentations. So, that's why uh, the transcription of Mozart was super important because it was a transcription of these ornaments, these extra notes that the singers add to the composition. 
There were three authorized copies of the work distributed prior to 1770, to the Holy Roman Emperor, Leopold I, to the King of Portugal, John V, and to Giovanni Battista Martini. However, it was felt that none of the three successfully captured the piece as performed annually in the Sistine Chapel. According to the popular story, backed by family letters, 14-year-old Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart was visiting Rome when he first heard the piece during the Wednesday service. Later that day, he wrote it down entirely from memory, returning to the chapel that same Friday to make some minor corrections. I must say that as a musician, this is incredibly hard to do, especially for a 14-year-old. So that's why only the genius could have done such a crime. Less than three months after hearing the song and transcribing it, Mozart had gained fame for the work and was summoned back to Rome by Pope Clement XIV, who showered praise on him for his feat of musical genius and awarded him the Chivalric Order of the Golden Spur on the 4th of July 1770. The genius of Mozart is something unparalleled in the history of classical music. This genius is due to the education that his father, Leopold Mozart, gave him. As a child, Mozart was forced to practice by his father the violin, piano, composition, harmony, counterpoint, and many other musical subjects, as well as the siblings of Mozart. The sister of Mozart was also an accomplished pianist and performed many of Mozart's works. Mozart's father, Leopold, wanted to show the talents of his kids to all the courts in Europe. As little children, they were traveling for years throughout Western Europe. Can you imagine what it was like traveling in the 18th century without cars, going on carriages for months and months on end with small children? This journey to the Sixteen Chapel in Rome is not uncommon for the Mozart family, since they were used to travel a lot throughout Europe. That's how Mozart got famous. He was famous throughout all Europe. He was a legend, a superstar, because his father made him perform for the most important aristocrats in Europe. That's how Mozart became a legend. But how did the music of Allegri sound like? Of course, it's impossible to know for sure, since there are no recordings at the time, the technology was still not developed, and the score does not show the ornaments. Actually, it's even more complex than that, because the current version differs quite significantly from the manuscript of Allegri. Many other versions nowadays Many choirs sing a kind of compilation of all of those versions. Some of them even have mistakes in them. And those mistakes have been passed down through generations. So musicologists have debated a lot. And one of those mistakes actually became ingrained in popular culture. In this piece, one of the striking moments is when the soprano, the top female voice, sings a very, very, very high note almost impossible to achieve, and it sounds incredibly beautiful. It's the climax of the piece. However, musicologists say that this high note was a transcription error, passed down throughout generations. Personally, this is a beautiful piece and one of my favorite choral pieces of all time. It gives me chills every time I hear it. I will finish this podcast by showing you a version of the Marian concert. They try to implement some ornaments that could have been used in the Sixteen Chapel. Before I present you with the recording, I will repeat the Danetka one more time, so you can play with your friends and family, now as the master. The perfect crime was committed. Only the genius could have done it. It was such an incredible feat 
that when the victim heard what happened, he rewarded the thief. Miserere mei, Gregorio Alegre, performed by the Marian Concert. Thank you. 